Hey everybody, happy Monday. I am Haley Gray, I'm the group owner here in the Women's Entrepreneur Network. I am the um, founder of Fiercely Marketing, which is a boutique digital marketing agency. And I'm here to talk tonight about giving up too soon. Um, one of the things that I see as a theme with small business owners a lot of times is constant churn in their businesses, in their marketing initiatives, in what they're offering. And, you know, honestly, what I see a lot of times is they're giving up too soon on their business and on their marketing. So we live in a world where a lot of times there are these big time gurus and they're promising this instant results. You're going to make six figures and blah, blah, blah months. And you're going to do blah, blah, blah. And it's all of these really big, huge promises. And it sounds amazing. It sounds awesome. You know, here's the reality. Six figures in six months is totally a thing. If you have a platform, if you have an audience who's ready and willing to receive your message, if you have people you're already in connection with, and if you already have those relationships, and if you have that platform and that reputation, you can just, bam, knock it out of the park. Here's the reality for the other 98% of us. It's going to take a little bit longer. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't mean that you're failing. There is a reason that, you know, a lot of us take three to five years to get to replacement income in our businesses. And, you know, is that sexy? No, it's absolutely not sexy. But here's the reality. If you can get a message and refine that message and stick with that message and build your platform build your connections, build your reputation, you're absolutely going to get to six, seven, eight, nine figures. Absolutely. But what I see with so many people is that they're constantly churning on their messaging in their business. So I want to promote this product. No, I want to promote that service. No, I want to do this. No, I want to do that. And they're changing their mind every two or three weeks or every four weeks or every month. Y'all, it's really hard to get traction, okay, I'm gonna be honest, it's impossible to get traction when you're constantly changing your mind about what it is that you're doing. I have grown Women's Entrepreneur Network to 73,000 members. It's also taken me six years to get there because I have stuck with it. I am absolutely generating a thousand leads a month because I have stuck with it because I continue to connect with people, because I continue to put out content, because I continue to connect with people. And I continue to get better and better and better results because it's like this little teeny tiny snowball. And I took that little tiny seed and I rolled it and I rolled it and I rolled it and I pushed it downhill and it became this really, really big snowball. Women's Entrepreneur Network started at zero, big old fat zero members six years ago. The way that I got people into the group was by personally inviting people into the group and then putting content into the group and doing all the things that I talk about doing in business. Is it sexy? Not really, you know, but are the results sexy? Yes, the results are hella sexy, right? I'm living the life I choose to live. I'm making the money I want to make and it continues to grow. And my business is doing really, really well because I kept sticking with it. Did I want to give up? Absolutely. Every single time my daughter bopped out of the hospital and bopped back in, you betcha, I wanted to give up. When I was going through weight loss surgery and when I was at 427 pounds and my doctor told me that I had to lose weight or I was going to die, did I want to give up? Yes, I absolutely wanted to give up this whole crazy business. Do you, I want to give up every once in a while now? Yes, I'm so freaking lootly, right? That's the thing though. But the thing that separates 
success from failure is sticking with it, that hard headedness, that doing it over and over again, because you believe and you love what you do so much. And it's such a core part of who you are that you're able to succeed, that you're able to reach that goal, that you're able to do it. Is everything in business fun? Oh, heck no, right? You know, would you guys believe me if I told you everything in business is fun and easy and, you know, it's all just flow and ease? You know, you'd probably want to just take me outside and shoot me because, I mean, that's not real. And I think that this whole idea that you're going to build this thing up and it's and you're going to do it on the first time and it's going to be perfect the first time is not real either. Here's the reality. In business, we take data, we analyze the data, we figure out what's working, we try something. We see what's working and we do it again and again and again. We used to joke a lot when I was... Um, younger because my husband is a software engineer and I am a software engineer by training. And hey Beth, good to see you. And we used to joke about um, the car that was on a hill and there's a bunch of engineers in the car. And um, you know, the car was going down the hill and the brakes failed. And so the mechanical engineer is like, uh, I don't know, here, let me look at the brakes. You know, let me analyze this. Let me do this. Let me do that. And the software engineer, and of course, I'm a software engineer, guys, goes, I don't know, push it back up the hill and see what happens again. And that's become my whole, like, mojo. Push it back up the hill and see if it fails the same way. Try it again. Find the bugs in the system. Test your ideas. Test your ideas. Try them out. See what works. Try something a little bit different. Push that sucker back up the hill again and see if the brakes fail another time. And the more times you push that car back up the hill and test it out and see what works, the more likely you are to succeed. Because success is merely a pattern of trying things over and over and over again until you figure out exactly why those stinking brakes failed what I learned in engineering school. I'll, you'll, you'll thank me for that um, four-year engineering degree. Um, and in computer science, we push that sucker up the hill and we keep testing it until we figure out exactly why the, the silly thing failed. And then once we figure that out, we push it back up the hill and we test it. And then we figure out, oh gosh darn, we forgot the steering in the, in the blinking car. So then we add the steering on the car. And then you know you do one thing at a time until you make it work and until that car drives beautifully. And it's very analogous to building a business. It is trying something and not giving up even when something keeps failing over and over and over again. You know, it's like Benjamin Franklin with the light bulb, you know, or any major inventor in life. It's sticking with it. You know, you may find 500 ways that don't work, but once you find that 501st that does, you're golden. But giving up too soon means that you're definitely not going to find the ways that work. And I see a lot of people who do the most amazing things in their business and they put this much amount of effort into the launch or this much amount of effort into the promotion. And I'll give you guys a hint. When I am doing judging for the um, Duke Gen and for the um, Duke Entrepreneurship Challenges where you can win like $50,000 as part of the entrepreneurship thing, um, you know, most of those teams fail because they don't do enough marketing. They're not planning to market it enough. And in fact, I see it out in the real world quite a bit. You know, you can have superior engineering, you can have superior products, you can have the bestest of the bestest of everything. But what ends up happening a lot of times we get our thing to market and then we give up just as we're starting to get traction and just as we're starting to market it. I mean, one really good example of this is IBM. 
I worked for IBM for a lot of years. And, you know, they would get these amazing pieces of technology to market with absolutely no way to sell them, no way to market them. And I would see it over and over again. And I'm like, wow, how does such a big company, how does such a big successful company still stay in business without sticking with the marketing and without you know, really focusing on their marketing and their messaging and their branding. And I think, you know, there's an aspect of luck that happens there. So how do you get around that aspect of luck and being, you know, that 2% who's the, you know, the golden child? Because I'll tell you, my life has never been the, um, I, you know, the perfect golden child, everything handed to me on a platter kind of person. I've always been the awkward girl, the ugly girl, the girl in the back of the room who's too fat, too thin, too whatever, the wrong religion when I was in my high school. Um, you know, in my career, I was the woman in the back of the room. I was the only woman in the room. And, you know, I've never been the popular one. But what I have found for success is that it doesn't matter. Even though I'm not the popular one, even though I'm not the cute one, even though I'm not the thin one, the smart one, the whatever, by sticking with it and staying on top of things through thick and thin, you know, that's how I grew a group to 73,000 members. That's how I have grown a huge business. It is how my life has gone because I have stuck with it because I refuse to give up. Even when I have a kid bopping in and out of the hospital faster than you can like imagine, and you've probably got whiplash going, oh my God, are we in, are we out, are we in, are we out? Because the insurance decided to today they're not gonna pay for it. So she's discharged today, but she'll be back tomorrow. Promise you. Um, you know, or you know, any of these kinds of things that happen. The only reason I'm still in business is because I'm just really obnoxiously stubborn. And I've learned that that stubbornness and that stick with itness and that hard headedness is an incredible trait in business. It's a lot of what we call mindset, sticking with itness, being willing to do what it takes to get the job done. You know, mindset is equal parts getting out of your own way and doing the damn work. I mean, you as Tiffany Lar, you would say, do the damn thing. Do, do that thing, do it. Getting out of your way is so important. Sticking with it, doing the thing, sticking with it, and talking to people, selling your thing is a huge predictor of success. It's amazing how that works. We've got a summit coming up on April 17th. Y'all are probably going to get really sick of hearing about it. April 15th through 17th. Um, you can get a ticket right now for just a dollar. Um, if you go to whensummit.com and use the coupon code bring a friend. Um, All together, no spaces, bring a friend. And you can register for just a dollar. We're going to be talking about mindset. We're going to be talking about mastering your business mindset and doing the things that you need to do in your business to be successful. And the things that need to happen, because guess what? This whole business thing, as I have learned, is a huge amount of knowing how to do the thing. But there's also a huge percentage of it that happens right here between our ears. And in fact, if we look in the mirror, we're probably looking at our own biggest competition because the biggest challenge that happens in our businesses is our own feeling of worth, our own feeling of value, our own things that we have going on in our heads. I want to encourage you to sign up. Come, let's talk about mindset. Let's get out of our own ways because I see so many people giving up way too soon in their businesses. I was talking to my husband tonight about two more people, you know, because I, I vent when I see this happen to people because it, it just it hurts my feelings when I see people giving up too soon in their businesses and not sticking with so something until it's successful that has the potential to be wildly successful but guess what they didn't stick with it long enough for it to be successful and that just gets me all kinds of butt hurt so 
you know, sign up for the summit. It's going to be amazing. Um, it's one of the things that I love to do. And hey, Kimberly, hey, Patty, hey, Aida, hey, Leigh, good to see you guys. And hey, Beth, you know, sign up, you know, for the summit. You're going to love it. It's going to be a ton of fun. And I'm going to end tonight's live um, by doing a card pull. And I apologize for being late getting on live tonight. I actually, um, my daughter had a procedure done this morning. And after not being able to eat for two days, she wanted cookouts. So I took her to cook out at 10 o'clock at night because what's a mom supposed to do? We were laughing because my parents would have like flipped their ever living minds doing that. So I'm going to pull a card um, from the love your inner goddess deck. Um, Kimberly says card six. I'm going to guess that um, Patty wants the top one and um, I'm going to stir the cards up real good and shuffle them. And I can show you they are all very, very, very pretty cards. I love the, this deck so much. I just love the energy in this deck. You know, stick with itness is an amazing, amazing, amazing thing. And you know what? It's so cool because we um, stick with things and suddenly we're able to accomplish things we never thought were imaginable. If you would have told me six years ago that I would have a Facebook group with 73,000 members in it, I would have laughed hysterically. I would have thought you were nuts. I would have thought it was never possible. And yet, somehow, it absolutely is possible. So I have a six, a three, an eight, a top, and all those things. And Patty is laughing, great mom, lol. Yeah, well, I almost done stuffing Easter eggs, too. I've stuffed over 1700 Easter eggs, too. Um, because we're going to take plastic Easter eggs to my son's school and egg it for Easter. Um, so we will see what a bunch of high school boys do when given piles of candy. So one, three, six, and eight, got it. So this one is for our top girl. Um, this one is for you, Patty. And I'm going to get you this one. So this card is here. This one is Soul Sisters. You're being emotionally and psychologically influenced by the people around you more than you may realize. Sometimes this is good. They uplift and inspire you and help you feel loved and loving. However, sometimes you can sense that being truly yourself in a situation could result in unwanted conflict and you undermine yourself to keep the peace. You'll find that the moment you stop doing this, some difficulties you've been having in a moving forward will fall away almost as if by magic. The relationships worth holding on to can handle a little more truth, even if feathers get ruffled before being smoothed over with love once more. So that's that one. That's one, two, three. This one is three. So this one is for Miss Lay, Peacock Priestess, 24. If you feel impatient for wanting something to happen or worried that you are not accomplishing all that you want to achieve quickly enough, then take heart. The universe is working with you, not against you, to bring your dreams to life. Even times when not much seems to be happening are a part of this creative process, balancing out other times when energy becomes active and intense. What will be most helpful for you and your dreams right now is to rest. During that pleasurable rest, Behind the scenes, some spiritual ma magic is going to be created. Four, five, six was um, Kimberly. These have a way of hitting a nerve, don't they? have a great way of bringing hitting a nerve. So here we go. Um, damselfly brings direction. You may not see it coming, but a major change within you or in your life is headed your way. You'll be able to handle it with more skill and grace than you may have believed possible. Do what it takes to keep yourself feeling positive and happy more often than not. We all have our ups and downs, but if you are not feeling happy with something in your life, 
know that you have the power to change it. Even if a radical change would be required to bring you happiness, you've got the power to do it. Have faith. Interesting, interesting. Hmm. It's interesting what y'all are getting tonight. I'm sensing some kind of strong messages here. Okay, this one's for you, Aida. Mm -hmm. Madonna of Roses. There is a way to be fierce that doesn't betray the kindness of your heart. When you know that to enable someone to behave badly towards you doesn't help them or you, you don't need to subject yourself to unnecessary guilt for taking care of yourself or fear that you aren't being compassionate. You are teaching yourself and others that truth, the truth that love is based in respect and that trying to take what doesn't belong to you through any form of aggression or manipulation, seduction or persuasion is neither loving nor respectful. Thorns are sharp because they need to be. They don't diminish the beauty of the rose. They protect it. Exciting, exciting. Thank you guys. I hope that you guys have an awesome night. Um, we will touch bases, grab your tickets for the summit, April 15th, 16th and 17th. It's going to be amazing. 10 a.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, we have some VIP events as well, and we have some amazing speakers lined up. And I hope to see you guys there. Take care. Bye-bye.